Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us tonight at the University of Washington Electrical Engineering Class of 2017 graduation. Please take a moment to look at your cell phones to ensure that they are set to silent or vibrate mode. As we start the event, we ask that the audience please rise for the procession of our electrical engineering faculty, graduation speaker, and graduates as they enter the arena.
Please be seated. Welcome graduates, family, friends, alumni, and faculty to our annual electrical engineering graduation celebration. We are delighted to have all of you here tonight. We gather here together to honor our graduating students who have worked hard during their stay at the University of Washington Electrical Engineering Department. Graduating from UW Department of Electrical Engineering is not an easy task. You should be all very proud of your achievement tonight. It has been a pleasure for our faculty to work with each and every student. The enthusiasm, energy, intelligence, and the cre creativity of our graduating students is unparalleled. I'm particularly fortunate to be in the company of such an exceptional group of colleagues. I'm also fortunate to be part of the department with such a successful group of alumni who have gone on to remarkable careers and achievements in their lives. Our UW EE graduates today are no different. They are bound to achieve greatness. As I look across the room here tonight, I see next generation of brilliant minds, the next generation of leaders who are ready to spread their wing and make their mark in the society. We have provided you with a diverse set of tools to succeed in your careers. Our alumni confirm an electrical engineering degree is one of the best engineering degrees one can have in today's market. Allowing our students to choose almost any career that demands technical innovation and leadership. You have graduated from a first-class electrical engineering program at a top-ranked university with a degree in one of the highest demand career fields. You have gained valuable research and internship experiences that will lead to graduate school, rewarding positions in industry, or in research laboratories. These are all outstanding accomplishments so far. But there is more. At UWE, our faculty and students are addressing problems that have high societal impact. We, the faculty at UWE hope, all of you graduates will carry this and take it to the next level in all endeavors you pursue with the goal of societal impact in your mind. Recently, we had a generous endowment from UWE alumni Milton Suchel and his wife, Delia Suchel. The initial endowment supports the growth of the department's Engineering Entrepreneurial Capstone Program, or called ENGINE, one of the first at the UW and definitely the first one at the College of Engineering. Enabling current and future UW EE students to engage in real-world industry partnerships and giving local companies an opportunity to benefit from the vibrant innovation culture at UW EE. A component of the endowment also establishes Milton and Delia Suchel Professorship in Entrepreneurial Excellence. This professorship supports department in recruiting and retaining entrepreneurially driven faculty who help to build and sustain an engineering entrepreneurial ecosystem at the University of Washington. When Milton and I had discussion about what would be the most beneficial engineering uh, student program, Milton noted that the real world readiness is critical to the success. The ability to understand how the world works helped the students navigate it effectively. Mill called it big picture. 
These discussions shaped the development of engine program, and I'm very pleased to say that over 40% of the graduating senior students have enrolled in this program and work with a faculty member and an industry member completing their year-long entrepreneurial capstones. We recently had the presentations of all the capstones, and there were more than 300 participants in the event. Entrepreneurship is intrinsic trait of UWEE. It is evident in our students' projects from low-cost malaria diagnostic tests that can benefit resource-poor communities to a mobile app that uses algorithms to improve rapid diagnostic tests. Our faculty and their students are at the center of innovation and entrepreneurship. UWEE students are also part of an eco-car project sponsored by General Motors. They transformed a Chevy Camaro into a hybrid electric car. Just a few weeks ago, in a nationwide competition, the group took the first place for their topic paper and the presentation at the National Foundation Innovation Award. Congratulations to the team. Those members of the eco-car that are here tonight I would like you to stand for a round of applause. Please sit down. EcoCar is a vertically integrated project co-led by Professor Bruce Darling of the Electrical Engineering Department. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our outstanding UWE alumni. Many of our alumni have built companies from their research at UW. First one, the most recent one, is Frederick Ryden, graduated from UWE 2013. While a graduate student, he started Blue Haptics, working with Professor Howard Chisek, who was his PhD advisor. The company is pioneering new solutions for telerobotics. Just recently, Blue Haptics received the NASA grant to optimize telerobotics in space. Ben Waters graduated from UWE with his PhD in 2015. Ben co-founded Vibotics with his advisor, Professor Josh Smith, as he was getting ready to graduates, so the student graduated at the same time was preparing to start his company. Vibotic builds wirelessly powered drones and robotic devices. The company recently received a 2.5 million investment to support product development on a larger scale. From our alumni to our students and to our faculty, we continue to innovate and expand to new frontiers. One such frontiers is the neuroengineering, device-driven neuroengineering program for rehabilitative devices for spinal cord injury. This year, coming academic year, I'm pleased to say that we have two new faculty joining us with this expertise. Dr. Amy Osborne comes to us from NYU with a focus on the brain-machine interfaces to restore motor functions to persons with motor disabilities. Amy joins us as a Claire Booth Luce professor and uh, has her PhD from Berkeley with the group that works closely with us on Engineering Research Center. Dr. Azade Yazdan Shamrod joins us from UCSF San Francisco. She has her PhD from Michigan. As we were interviewing her, Stanford also was trying to interview her. She's using stimulation-based therapies to develop novel tools to restore function and mobility in people with neurological disorders. Azade will join as a Washington Research Foundation term professor for the program. These new faculty add to a department that is dedicated to innovation and entrepreneurship. UWE is currently ranked as the number one department in the entrepreneurial engineering and startups here at the University of Washington, including the medical school, since 2010. Tonight, I'm pleased to introduce a true innovator and UW alumni. 
our 2017 graduation speaker, Dr. George Huang, who has been a leader in entrepreneurship over 30 years. This, in this very special occasion, George is also joined by his wife, Margaret, daughter, Diadina, her husband, Michael, uh, George's son, Dwight, George's wife, Cassie, uh, sorry, uh, Dwight's wife, Cassie, and our future husky, Aaron, who is sitting there. I had the pleasure to spend some time yesterday evening with Aaron and his family. Since graduating from UWE with his PhD in 1973, George has achieved numerous successful business accomplishments. Particularly, his impact on green top desktop technology paved the way for other companies to follow. When Dr. Huang was CEO and the chairman of Award Software, he established industry standards for the production and use of green bios. This type of firmware notices when the computer is not in use and will power down to preserve energy. Today, almost all PC manufacturers have adopted the ACPI standards that Dr. Huang's company developed. With over 30 years of business experience, Dr. Huang continues to make an impact. He is currently the chairman and CEO of Future Dial. Future Dial is a leading provider of choice of mobile device processing solutions for wireless carrier. Not only is Dr. Huang successful in his own endeavors and business propositions, he has been also a phenomenal community leader, giving back to his community in the Bay Area. In 2009, Dr. Huang was selected by Wenrock as one of the 40 most successful entrepreneurs. He continues to expand the boundary of what is possible in technology and leave the, leaves a generous legacy for other companies to follow. I have had the pleasure to visit the Bay Area twice and meet with him twice in his company. I see many of the photos in his boardroom showing the community interaction and impact. So that impressed me the most, since I already knew he was a top leader of the technology world. So please join me in welcoming our very own Dr. George Huang. Thank you, Chairman Pulvandran. Uh, it's really my great honor to be here, back to the alma mater, to uh, share with you my experience since I left the school here. Uh, I study under Professor Lytle uh, for probability theory and digital signal processing, also under Professor Ishmaru uh, for microwave uh, theory. And I'm so glad to see Pro Professor Ishimaru here. So uh, what I would like to do is to basically share with you my experience in my professional career as well as my personal life. And uh, as I was preparing for the speech, uh, I was thinking, you know, this must be uh, not that difficult because I, I am a member of the choir. And Singing, you know, is something that I'm not too afraid of. But today, it's very, very difficult because I'm singing solo. Okay. Uh, but uh, I wanted to say to you that uh, when you go through the career, you know, starting tomorrow after the graduation ceremony today, you are going to have different endeavors and I wish you the very best luck. And as far as uh, what I would suggest to you, uh, I have a couple things, or maybe three things to suggest. The first thing I'd like to suggest to you is to live your own life. And don't try to follow somebody else's. And don't be uh, constrained by the dogma, uh, by the uh, 
the life set by other people. And this was a very famous uh, part of the spe uh, speech given by Steve Jobs, the ex-CEO at Apple. Uh, I had a chance to see him a few times before he passed away, but his uh, speech at Stanford uh, has become the classic you know, graduation speech. So what I just mentioned here is what he gave the graduate, uh, graduating students you know, to live their own lives uh, and, and to be honest with uh, their intuition and, and then work hard and then uh, uh, try to uh, persevere. That's something I want to emphasize here. Uh, you know, as you graduate, it's not easy to get into the, uh, the work field, into the industry, or have a teaching career. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do is that uh, for me, uh, I will share with you my experience coming to the United States from Taiwan. Um, as uh, a graduate student, uh, I first uh, landed in San Francisco, and as the flight took off, um, I took a connecting flight to come to Seattle. As the flight took off, making a turn north, I could see through the windows, the city lights, the whole metropolitan huge areas surrounding San Francisco Bay. And I was so impressed by the scale and the prosperity you know, in the US. After I got into the Seattle area here, my friends uh, took me around, uh, drove me to the surrounding areas in Seattle, and took me to the east of Cascade Mountain. Uh, that was the central part of uh, Washington State. And I see uh, basically huge farmland. I see a lot of rows and big, big wheat field. I felt that this country is really great. And I wish I could learn more and maybe uh, I can contribute in some sense to this great country. Uh, you probably know, at least that's my, uh, my feeling up to so many years uh, here, is this country is very generous to the immigrants. Uh, they gave me the opportunity, uh, they gave me the, the guidance. Without any connection, I could have started on my own. That was not possible where I came from. You've got to have connection, right? So I really you know, thank uh, the United States for giving me this opportunity. Um, and I personally ch chose to come here and I have never regretted it. I feel that I benefited a great deal in this country. My second uh, uh, suggestion I would like to share with you is that please work hard and uh, persevere, okay? You know, life is not easy, but if you work hard, if you don't give up, then, then there's always a chance that you can succeed. So, but if you choose to give up, then the game is over, okay? So, um, the other thing I would like to emphasize to you is that, you know, we are in a society where um, what we can do, what we can contribute, uh, either is technology or in the uh, uh, business field. If you focus, if you work hard, you will get your reward, okay? And um, the other thing is, uh, after I uh, was graduating from uh, Washington State University, uh, I wasn't thinking too much when my friends came to Seattle to look for jobs in Boeing. And I went along and my friend picked up an extra form. So I filled out the form, went back to uh, Pullman, then I got a call from Boeing, and this was at Boeing that my friends were looking for uh, work. And the recruiter called me and say, you know, would you like to come to Seattle interview? Uh, we could offer you a job. And I was so surprised by, by hearing this. I decided to come here to interview, and I got a job. And furthermore, the human resource uh, department 
and at Boeing told me that back then, this was many years ago, a EE student with a master's degree would have qualified uh, to have a green car. <laughs> and I know things are different now. So they went through the application process for me, and then I got my green car. I became a permanent resident you know, in this great United States of America. And I really uh, felt that was a, a big uh, change in my career and in my life. Uh, after I studied uh, here, um, I started working on uh, the digital communication theory. Uh, that was taught by Professor Lytle. And that really gave me the chance to look out for different opportunities uh, I applied for a job in California because I heard so much about California being the golden state, right? A lot of opportunities. So I was hired by Ford Aerospace where I learned how to design uh, digital signal processing systems, ground stations, and even satellites. So working at Ford Aerospace, there was a requirement uh, for me to uh, report my background. So I fill out the form, and unbeknownst to me, an uh, FBI agent went to Taiwan to check me out. <laughs> and my father said, you know, what's going on? You know, are you okay? <laughs> I said, you know, I'm just trying to keep my job. <laughs> uh, and uh, lo and behold, I got the, uh, the permission and also some additional uh, uh, you know, qualification. And so if you have any question, I can tell you, I'm government certified. Um, and then a few years later, I uh, started thinking about you know, how to uh, go beyond the defense industry. So I was approached by a company in semiconductor equipment it's called KLA, and any one of you that are um, familiar with the semiconductor industry, KLA is a very big instrument company that produces uh, photo mask inspection as well as wafer probing uh, equipment. So I was approached by KLA, trying to entice me to leave to work into the commercial world. First, I didn't quite un quite. I wasn't ready to accept such a, a challenge and opportunity, but Ken Levy, uh, Mr. Levy is the founder of KLA. Uh, he invited me and my wife, Margaret, to a lunch, and he brought his wife uh, with him. And we had a great lunch, and, and the two wives you know, seemed to hit her off well. <laughs> that was the reason why I went to KLA, and that started my commercial uh, you know, uh, uh, career. And that pretty much pushed me into the, the commercial world for good. So after that, uh, I started my own company doing, um, um, uh, you, you, when, you, when you turn on the PC, you probably see a copyright statement that says award or maybe Phoenix. And that is the copyright statement for the product we put into the, the PC. And this was a product that was needed by every PC. And then uh, we worked hard. We became a dominant force uh, in the desktop uh, PC BIOS. But then our biggest competitor came uh, and knocked on the door. And that was Phoenix Technologies. So I was uh, try at trying to find out whether the company, they proposed a merger. So, and we were not sure about making a merger, but then after months of discussion, the board approved the merger, thinking that with our desktop market share and Phoenix being very big in the uh, notebook field. So we decided to merge, but the life really wasn't that easy. We submitted the merger plan to the Federal Trade Commission and you probably have heard, you know, FTC is a very tough uh, over, you know, commission overseeing the industry merger. So for several months, we were told we could not merge. 
because there were only three BIOS companies. And if the two merged, there would be only two BIOS companies left, and they don't want to see another dominant software company in the PC world. And we worked hard, we persevered, uh, and then two, about two months after that, we got a call from FTC that says, uh, the, the, uh, the official there said, you could go ahead and merge. And we said, you know, why? <laughs> Uh, is there any condition? And, and the Federal Trade Commission guy said, no, there's no condition, you go, guys go ahead and merge. So then we happily merged, and what happened was FTC was getting very busy preparing a lawsuit against Microsoft. And so they ran out uh, attorneys. There was no attorney to try to up block our merger. So we merged, and we became the biggest BIOS company in the field. And nowadays, we are still shipping like over 100 million uh, software copies in the PC market. And then after that merger, uh, my investors uh, called me and asked me to start another business. And I said, you know, I'm just about ready to retire. You know, why start another business? You know, this is crazy. Uh, they say, well, you have hit a home run, right? So do it again. <laughs> you don't have to write a business plan. And I didn't. I said, it looks like, you know, cell phone is a big area. And the size of the units is like three times bigger than PC. So I said, how about doing, you know, cell phone software? And my investors, uh, the major one is Venrock. And that is the Rockefeller Family uh, Investment Fund. And uh, they said, go ahead. We have money. You start your company. So this is my second company that I'm working on. And this company has been doing quite well. Uh, we serve the telecom industry. We serve the major carriers around the world. And uh, I'm talking about uh, you know, uh, the tier one carriers here, the Verizon the Sprint and T-Mobile. And in Japan, we have all the three uh, major carriers, the Docomo, the, uh, the KDDI, and um, SoftBank. So this set us on a very big platform for future growth. And one of the reasons why I'm here is I'm, I'm trying to get into artificial intelligence field. And this must be a very hot topic for you. So please, if you are interest in anything like machine learning, you know, uh, artificial intelligence, please let me know. <laughs> um, so uh, as, as I, uh, you know, went through all my career, I feel that I have one thing that I want to emphasize, that is you should work hard, but you should enjoy the work and especially when you are getting older, try to work not because of the pay, okay? Work because you enjoy it. Work because you get recognition, your satisfaction of the work you do. So that will be the goal I hope you can set. One of these days, you work not for the pay, okay? Uh, you work for your own satisfaction, uh, for your family, for your wife, and for the society. And uh, what I can say is that uh, as, as you are successful, I would like you to see the virtue of helping the young generation. And that's what I am doing to some extent. So uh, I am uh, with a small investment uh, group, and then we invest in different startups. And there is a golden rule in the venture investing that is 10% is successful, 90% is failure. Okay, so don't expect too much when you invest. <laughs> but my experience is, is pretty much the same. You know, we invest in several startups and only two that are successful. One is PayPal, which gave us a lot of return. The other is a company called Allergan. That is a cosmetic medication company that's very big. Uh, and the, re uh, the rest is pretty much, you know, failure or closing doors. 
but don't be discouraged because uh, you are doing this if you can. You are paying back to the society that has been so good to you. And when you can, try to pay back to the society. Try to take care of the young people. Give them your experience. Help them. I think they will really appreciate it. And the whole country here will benefit from it. Okay. So with this, I, I want to thank you uh, for your you know, attention today. It's a brief uh, message that I'm conveying to you, but I believe now with your training, and I have big faith in UW, I think that UW trains and produces some very, very capable graduates. So you know, I wish you the best of luck, and going forward, please work hard, don't give up, persevere, okay? Thank you. First, uh, thank you very much for sharing. Uh, we have some gifts for you. So, okay. yeah, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and experience and the message to the graduates. We have uh, a, a token of recognition for you. This is uh, a formal. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, We also have, in recognition of technical excellence and for inspiring next generation of engineers, this is from the department. On behalf of the faculty and the student and the staff, I give this to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, George, again. We would like to recognize the staff, faculty, and students who are receiving awards for their outstanding contributions to the department. Each award recipient is recognized for their efforts towards the success of the department. We would like to recognize these individuals and invite them to come, to, come on stage as their names are called. The first one is the Outstanding Faculty Award. The Outstanding Faculty Award recognizes a faculty member who demonstrates a clear commitment to students and the department. This year's Outstanding Faculty Award recipient is Professor Les Atlas. <laughs> Professor Atlas stood out as a top contender for this award. For his students, he provides exemplary mentor mentorship and exhibits creative approaches to teaching with a clear commitment to student success. One student described him as the coach everyone would want to have on his or her team. Les's dedication to students is what sets him apart as an outstanding faculty member. Congratulations, Les. Next one is the Outstanding Staff Award. The Outstanding Staff Award recognizes a staff member who consistently exceeds expectation. This year's Outstanding Staff Award is presented to Travis Sailing, UWE webmaster. Travis is unable to join us tonight. According to his colleagues, Travis goes above and beyond his general work expectations. He consistently finds ways to help his coworkers when asked. Congratulations to Travis, who is not here. <laughs> Next award is Outstanding Undergraduate Student Award. The Outstanding Undergraduate Student Award recognizes an undergraduate student who shows an exemplary commitment to the department in service activities. 
This year's outstanding undergraduate award recipient is Jacqueline Wilson. Before I read the rest of, I have to say, I have taken many photos with Jacqueline for many different awards she has already received. So I'm going to read a few of them. <laughs> Jacqueline excels academically, as well as dedicating her time to various activities and clubs at the university. She has won numerous awards, including IEEE Power and Energy Society Scholars, two years in a row and the National Honor Society Outstanding Scholarship Award. She is a Puget Power Endowed Scholar. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Outstanding Professional Student Award. Outstanding Professional Student Award is in recognition of a professional student who shows an exemplary commitment to their education and career. This year's Outstanding Professional Student Award goes to Ladonna Handugan. In her classes, Ladonna contributes a great detail, deal to the class discussion. She is a true collaborator, always willing to help any students with questions. She currently works at Boeing as an aerospace engineer. Congratulations, LaDonna. The next one is Yang Research Award for Outstanding Doctoral Student. The Yang Research Award for Outstanding Doctoral Student is in recognition of a doctoral student who has conducted outstanding research in the field of electrical engineering. This year's Yang Award recipient is Tong Zhang. Tong's work has been well received by the research community and is of special interest to leaders in the tech industry. According to his colleagues, Tong works tirelessly on his research efforts and collaborations, exhibiting a high level of dedication and talent. Tong received the prestigious 2016 IEEE Solid State Circuit Pre-Doctoral Award for his work. Congratulations, Tong. I will also add that uh, recently we had a partner from Hong Kong. The CEO and the CTO visited and they wanted to see some labs. So his advisor was on the hallway and I said, uh, Chris, we are going to another lab. Do you have something to show? He said, yes, yeah, sure. And uh, Tong was there. Instantaneously he asked Tong to demonstrate his work and he was ready as if he has prepared for this demo for a long time. So it was a wonderful experience, and uh, they were blown away. So great job. The next one is Vikram Jantiala and Suja Vaidyanathan Endowed Innovation Award in Electrical Engineering. At this time, I would like to invite Professor Vikram Jantiala to the podium to present Vikram Jantiala and Suja Vaidyanathan Endowed Innovation Award in Electrical Engineering. Vikram is also former department chair, and his wife, Suja Vadinathan, they both jointly founded and endowed Innovation Award to recognize students with entrepreneurial spirit. Vikram now serves as UW Vice President for Innovation Strategy. In his new role, he has facilitated and enabled the IP packaging mechanism in such a way that it is in favor of the innovators, that are the students and the faculty of the university makes it very easy for industry to collaborate. Many of my faculty uh, are recipient of 
multiple different awards that commotion manages and encourages innovation in this campus. I'd like to thank you for your generosity to our students. This innovation award is given in to one undergraduate and one graduate student who have successfully led entrepreneurial efforts. This year's undergraduate student award goes to Yi Chung Wang. Yichun's professors and peers are impressed with his dedication to both academic performance and activities. Through these endeavors, he has exhibited strong professional skills in programming and circuit design. As a member of the team ARI, Yichun recently received second place at the Environmental Innovation Challenge and Business Plan Competition. He had made outstanding contributions to entrepreneurship as a key contributor to the development of ARI a battery-free home sensing product. Congratulations, Ichun. <laughs> this year's Graduate Student Award goes to Shane Colborn. Shane excels academically, and his professors note that his dedication, distinct, sorry, distinction is exemplified in his ability to found his research interest in reality. He has a true knack for technology transition and business. This unique and valuable trait was illustrated in his contribution to Ocumen, which produced an innovative medical sensing solution to detect and manage glaucoma. The product made it to the semi-final round of the UW Foster School's business plan competition. Congratulations, Shane. Thank you. The Chess Award. The Chess Award recognizes outstanding accomplishments within the electrical engineering department for both staff and faculty. This year's award recognizes three staff members and two faculty members who have made lasting contributions to the department through their positions and continued service. The first chess award is presented to Manas Shershoy, Jesse Mom, and Kelly Williams. <laughs> Manas, Jesse, Kelly. <laughs> Manas, Je Jesse, and Kelly make up UW E's advancement team. They received this award for their continued, dedicated partnership in UW E advancement efforts. We are very grateful to the long hours they dedicate to the alumni of the UW E. Congratulations, Manas, Jesse, and Kelly. The second chess award is presented to Professor John Saar and Payman Arabsaki. Professor Saar and Arabsaki have been integral champions for our engineering entrepreneurial capstone program. They have fostered industry partnerships, allowing engine program to be successful preparatory career program for UW EE students. Congratulations to both John and Payman. John is also instrumental in uh, making sure that DTC or the director college admit that you might have read in the newspapers, 
pass us through different administrative hurdles. So we are very thankful that uh, he was part of the uh, committee at the university level. So with this, congratulations to all award recipients. You helped make UWE an exceptional institution. We are lucky to have faculty, staff, and students who are dedicated to the success of the department and the university. Thank you very much. Now we look back, and it's time for us to recognize the alumni who are here with us tonight, who are part of the UWE class of 1967 as a way to celebrate their 50-year graduation reunion. Please stand as your names are called. Guillermo Casanuda. They're in that side. Guillermo graduated with his bachelor's degree from the department. He spent his career implementing and guiding projects to help poor people, including farm worker families. These projects include initiating the state's family, women, infant, children nutritional program in 1972, implementing low-income medical and dental clinics, as well as implementing a special program designed to teach families to build their own homes and make a budget to pay off their bank loans. John Coltart. John Coltart graduated with his bachelor's degree from the department and had a 36 career at Chevron. He is a Vietnam era veteran and a four, with a four years in Air Force. John created a scholarship in E with first priority towards military students. He and his wife enjoy traveling and nature photography. John is also a regular visitor and member of the department functions, so I have had more opportunities to engage with him and his wife. <laughs> Donald Gardner graduated, Donald, Donald Gardner graduated magna cum laude with a bachelor's degree from the department. Donald attended Stanford for his master's degree with a scholarship from Bell Labs, where he worked for one year following the graduation from UWEE. After receiving his master's degree, he began a 27-year career with Boeing Company, which included a nine-year gap, while developing electronics for startup quantum medical systems in Issaquah. Don Iverson. Don Iverson graduated from the department with a bachelor's degree and was honored to join the engineering honorary Tau Beta Pi. He embarked on a career as a system engineer with IBM, ending in a management position. Don is enjoying his retirement with his wife and grandchildren. Gary Libret. <laughs> Gary Libret graduated from the department with his bachelor's degree. He worked as an RF microwave design engineer for several aerospace companies on missile, aircraft, and RF communication in California, Texas, and Washington State. In retirement, Gary and his wife of 49 years old, uh, sorry, 49 years, No offense to Gary. <laughs> In retirement, Gary and his wife of 49 years, who he met at the University of Washington, enjoy the Cannon Beach area of Oregon as a second home. So now, I hope Gary is not in any trouble because of my statement. The next one again is someone who I see very often, and I have seen his uh, grandson Gunnar at the 
Discovery Days, breakfast of the department. This is Rob Schoenfeld. Uh, Rob, uh, <laughs> Rob received his bachelor's degree from the department and went on to work most of his career in the defense industry. He co-founded and was the CEO of a company and helped raise venture capital funding for two others related to the wireless world. Upon retiring, he consulted for a few years and returned to his real passion, which is engineering. He enjoys golf, playing racquetball, and traveling. Rob. Again, it's a great pri privilege to have you here to inspire our graduating class of 2017, who in another 50 years will return here and in a larger number and celebrate this event to inspire the next ones. So please join me again uh, in congratulating the class of 1967. So now we move on to the presentation of our graduates. As we recognize each student, we ask the family members, remain in your seats with your cameras. <laughs> I know this is a great moment and a lot of pride and excitement. So there will be opportunities for the in the foyer for photos after the program. We understand the enthusiasm and excitement that surrounds this event, and thank you for your cooperation. I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Eve Riskin. <laughs> Professor Riskin is a College of Engineering Associate Dean of Diversity and Access, who, together with Bruce Darling, Dr. Professor of Electrical Engineering will announce the names of our graduates. Since the first graduation list is for the graduates, I invite Dr. Mario Ostendorf, the Graduate Program Coordinator to, Coordinator, to say a few words before the conferral of the doctoral degrees. Good evening. The Doctor of Philosophy is the highest degree granted by our department and the highest degree recognized by the profession. It not only affirms a mastery of the specialty area, but it also demonstrates the successful completion of independent research, which has led to new scientific knowledge, engineering insights, and or more efficient, more accurate techniques. Innovation is at the heart of the electrical engineering PhD. For some students, that's meant new ways of solving uh, old problems. That, uh, that problems that, new ways of solving old problems that push the state of the art. For others, they've developed new technology that has implications for a range of applications. And still others have introduced entirely new research problems to the field. The PhD graduates here are not just brilliant. They have broken barriers because of their creative vision, bold questioning, and persistent experimentation. It is this combination that fuels progress and can change our world. EE PhD graduates, you could not have achieved this degree without being exceptional students but you undoubtedly experienced setbacks along the way. Trying and failing is, believe it or not, good. It builds intuition and hones your technique. As you leave UW I and enter the next stage of, of your career, I challenge you to experiment without a fear of failure. It will lead you to great discoveries. Tonight, we're here to acknowledge your discoveries and honor your great achievement of the Doctor of Philosophy degree. We shall now announce the 2017 PhD graduates in electrical engineering, who will be hooded by their faculty advisors.
Wu Weisen Sang. Next graduate is Kevin Huang. His advisor is Howard Chiswick, and his title of his thesis is Evaluation of Haptic Virtual Fixtures with Real-Time Sensors. Our next graduate is Nava Agdasi. Her professor is Blake Hannaford, and her dissertation title is Computer-Assisted Preoperative Planning System for Skull Based Surgery. Our next graduate is Dan Ying Hu. Her PhD thesis advisor is Blake Hannaford, and the title of her dissertation is Semi Automation in Image Guided Robotic Brain Surgery. Our next graduate is Mohammed Hagigi Pana, who also has Professor Blake Hannaford as his advisor. His dissertation title is Estimation of Position in External Force of Cable Driven, cable -driven Surgical Robots. Congratulations. Our next graduate is Aaron Sanahira. Her PhD thesis advisor is Professor Lee Lin, and the title of her dissertation is Efficient, Stable Perovskite Solar Cells Enabled by Electrode Interface Engineering and Nanoscale Face Stabilization. Our next graduation is Pei Feng Jing. His professor is also Professor Lee Lin, um, and his dissertation is Photonic Crystal optical tweezers for live biological samples. Our next graduate is Omar Konash. His PhD thesis advisor is Professor Rich Christie, and the title of his dissertation is The Effect of Photovoltaic Solar Plant Participation on Different Market Structures in a Deregulated Environment without financial incentives in the Saudi electricity grid. Our next PhD is G. He. His advisor is M Professor Mari Ostendorf, and his dissertation is Deep Reinforcement Learning in Natural Language Scenarios. Our next graduate is Zehu Wang. His thesis advisor is Professor Daniel Kirshen, and the title of his dissertation is Bridging the Gaps for Distributed Energy Resources. Our next graduate is Yi Shen Wang. His advisor is also Professor Daniel Kirshen. His dissertation is Ener Energy Storage Operation with Wind Uncertainty. Our next graduate is Tong Zhang. His uh, thesis advisor is Professor Chris Rudell, and the title of his dissertation is Integrated Wideband Self-Interference Cancellation Techniques for FDD and Full Duplex Wireless Communication. Our next uh, PhD is Demeng. His advisor is Professor Mariam Fazel. He'll be hooded tonight by Professor Mari Ostendorf and his dissertation is Graph Design via Convex Optimization, colon, Online and Distributed Perspectives. Our next graduate is Poshan Lee. <laughs> He'll 
be hooded by his thesis advisor, Professor Linda Shapiro. And Bill Au. <laughs> And our final PhD for tonight is Michael Gould. His, his advisor is Professor Kaimei Fu. His dissertation is optics-based quantum information and sensing platforms utilizing the nitrogen vacancy center in diamond. So now we will invite Dr. Josh Smith, Professional Master's Program Coordinator, to say a few words before the presentation of all the master's degree, master's in science graduates. Josh. Early in its ranks, the master's was a distinct degree typically awarded in course to recipients of a bac baccalaureate degree who were able to maintain a respectable lifestyle, such as keeping out of jail for three years. So you had to stay out of jail. <clears throat> it remained this way for centuries. The idea of an earned master's degree signifying advanced study is thus relatively new. So my graduates, you're in, a, in an elite class you are earning a master's degree not because you have avoided incarceration, but because you have exhibited an advanced level of academic fortitude. If I were to elect to give you a piece of advice, it would not be to work hard, because that would be advice you've already practiced and deeply understood. Each of the master's degrees we are about to award represents years of work and study, financial sacrifice, and time away from families, during evenings, particularly for the professional master's students. It is through hard work and perseverance that you achieved your degree tonight. My unsolicited advice to you is to ask yourself what's next, work towards your goal. Actually, that was not my advice. My advice is stay out of jail. We will now award the 2017 candidates to the MSEE degree. Dennis Korolev. Brian Bennett. <laughs> Rubai Wang. Bin Yu. <laughs> Bowen Chu. Yu Yen. Ping Cha Sai. Rohan Patidar. Yana Savnevskaya. Nevaditha Kalavakonta. Matthew Jones. Logan Adams. Shi Shin. Shweta Kanan. Dan Guo. A 
Hashim Muhammad. Kevin Morrissey. Jose Tomas Arenas. Saurav Sharma. Congratulations. Kyle Lashbrook. Ai Cheng Wang. Shinky Tang. Elaine Rivas. Chris Eilander. Christopher Stubel. Tutu Ong. Jijo Jo. James Bunce. Okay. John Janani Sankara Subramanian. Alexander Matsuoka. Pranav Desai. Anne Marie Goldman. Any interest in trading hats? Uh, this is Daryl Ross. Marta Wang. <laughs> Leslie Nixon. <laughs> David Pedroni. Jason Zhu. Madonna Handugan. And Yu Guang Li. Move on to the bachelor's degree uh, list. Dr. John Saar, our undergraduate program coordinator, will say a few words before the presentation. John. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'd like to join my colleagues in congratulating each of our graduates and recognize their families, but of these graduates, the hard work and long hours that they've put in to earn their place with us tonight. I stand with you tonight in awe, not just because of the level of talent in our bachelor's degree graduates, but because of the depth and breadth of their passion for learning. These students will change our world. They will invent new technology that will make our lives better. There's a lot of work to do. Some of our challenges are large, climate change, our aging society, asymmetric security and privacy threats, but the opportunities are enormous as well. And there are many important roles for electrical engineers. Engineers in this room will expand their reach beyond Ohm's law and channel capacity. They will start new businesses, lead small and large corporations, and work in government. I wear these graduation robes three times a year for three different occasions. Freshman convocation, which some of you may have attended, graduation ceremonies in the spring, and the third time is, of course, for Halloween, uh, just for fun. <laughs> Our students know how to have fun, too, whether it's pieing faculty in the face to raise money for charity. By the way, grades are due this coming Tuesday. <laughs> or making an interesting video about things that EE students never say. I am pleased and relieved and gratified by the broad creativity and initiative of our students. As a person of a certain age, I'm definitely expecting you students to have perfected the self-driving car so that I can rely upon it in a few years. Our students are enriching their experiences not only in the classroom, but by participating in significant technical challenges such as the eco car that you heard about earlier, and designing and building the small satellite that our students will put into orbit in just about a year and a half. So congratulations to you all. We shall now announce the 2017 Bachelor's Degree in Electrical Engineering graduates. Thank you. Chi Ching Lin. Matthew McKee. Douglas Smith. Jeremias Cordoba. Daniel Zhu. Don Leong. Young Jean Kang. Courtney Chang. Paula Siskowitz. Congratulations. Scott Yoshida. Beck Lee. Salish Suri. Ishana Sharma. Rajdeep Singh. Mandeep Plaha. Mm -hmm. 
Christian Gobrecht. Alvin Nguyen. Athena Ebert. Ryan Mills. Carissa Flugstad. Kyle Hess. Vladislav Sipko. Chain Yu Wu. Wenbing Zhang. David Sa. King Yu Jackie Wang. <laughs> Tessa Lombard Henley. <laughs> William Sang. <laughs> Dustin Weirin. Long Hei Wong. Swan Het Ong. David Galongowitz. Justin Houghton. William Butterton. Christina Chung. Joey Tai. <laughs> Joanna Yang. <laughs> Anthony D'Amico. Alexandra Raphael. Keisha Brewer. Jacqueline Wilson. Amanda Lowe. Joanna Mazer. Nicholas Lopez. Brian Bednarski. Woo! 
Minister Kiel. Sharyar Khalid. <laughs> Adolfo Pineda. <laughs> Kevin Sadikoff. Selena Yu. Zuyan He. <laughs> Zhu Yang Jin. Jawei Zhang. Zachary Feingold. Jack Gent. Jeffrey Ludwig. Matthew Denninger. Colin Gunningham. Khalid Fahad Alzuhar. Here. Sean Lysel. Emerson Kim. Uloma Okoro. Catherine Kennedy. <laughs> Marissa Kranz. <laughs> Nicholas Gutierrez. <laughs> Destiny Mora. Matthew Value Congratulations. David Anderson. <laughs> Andreek Liu. Tao Nguyen. <laughs> Freddie Cadiz. <laughs> Bryce Patel. <laughs> Connor Blomquist. Yichung Wang. Yin K. Wang. Yu Hao Wang.
Justin Almarez. Andrew Townsend. <laughs> Justin Kotalik. Congratulations. Rodney Linton, Jr. <laughs> Kevin Luo. Thomas Burroughs. Adam Burroughs. Kevin Octavian. Randy Lirano. Natat Premvuti. Shiyu Sha. Chad Prybell. Yuan Chao Zhu. Wang Li Yuan. Adrian Peerview. Yo. Tam Nguyen. Nan Thon Chow. Hui Nguyen. <laughs> also, we win. <laughs> non Tran. Strong. Hung Yu Chao. Julam Zhu. Hung Ting Wang. Chris Peterson. Vishesh Sood. Sean Happeny. Katie Neff. Yeah. 
Nicholas Turner. Eric Burquist. Curtis Hushagen. Skylar Martins. Congratulations. Nathaniel Broughton. Yushang Wang. Nan Wong. Josh John. Wen Jun Zhu. Ryan Tsang. Winham Town. Yi Kun Lee. Ji Jun He. Win. Yulun Bai. Lens Lunji Zhang. Yuking Jin. <laughs> Dife Lu. <laughs> Xiao Cheng Zhang. Ryan Pennell. <laughs> Scott Soul. <laughs> Daniel Park. Junyi Zhu. <laughs> Ying Wang. <laughs> Yuran Wu. Abigail Santos. Yuni Yi. Jian Feng Wang. Clement Chung. Q 
Kishuan Huang. Sini Shi. Chelsea Ramos. <laughs> Jinjin Zhang. All of us, please uh, join me in congratulating the graduation class of 2017. So students, uh, please stand up. So this is for the students. And then, yes. This is uh, our time to thank your family and your friends, and especially your parents, who have shared the responsibility and also the time that you went through this education system. So please uh, join me in thanking your family and friends can sit down and uh, <laughs> as you move forward uh, always remember that uh, family was and uh, they are part of uh, what you build and all your success comes from uh, what they have shared with you so in conclusion uh, thank you all for celebrating this significant milestone with us tonight have a wonderful evening evening and then congratulations again to the University of Washington Electrical Engineering Class of 2017. <laughs> this closes the event. Thank you.